Hello there, just a very short video about what Dr. Taylor said at the press conference today in respect when they were talking about baby F and the glucose reading of 999, which is a sort of error code. He mentioned that if the glucose is too high to read, it just zaps to that error code reading of 999. And he mentioned that it would have been above a reading of, I think he said 54 or 56 or something like that. I had heard previously it was 600, but anyway, it's obviously a top of a range that that machine is able to read. When it goes beyond it, it hits the error code. He postulates there, and they go into it, there's a bit of back and forth with the journalists about the idea of contamination. I wasn't clear from watching that and not being medical or scientific, yeah, and I don't think they did explain it in detail, the actual mechanism or cause or potential range of causes for such contamination to give that higher high a glucose reading he talked about the lines and the idea that um if the same line had been used when the baby had been given a uh, the same baby baby f had been given given insulin a few days prior that that insulin could have stuck to the edges of this of the tube in some way or the line rather and then further contaminated leading to this contaminated result i wasn't quite clear on that because i just don't have the medical or technical scientific knowledge but it struck me that this might be completely off the wall we hear that there was a blood gas machine in the unit that was broken and it was broken long term and that they had to use other ones a bit further off or in another unit in obstet obstetrics or somewhere like that but this was um, reported in a recent, it may, I think it may have been the Telegraph, Sarah Napton, I think, possibly the Guardian, can't remember, over the last couple of months about this broken uh, blood gas machine. So it just got me thinking, because Dr. Taylor in that conference talks about um, this absurdly high reading, as he calls it, or something like that, absurd, like it's never seen anything like it, ridiculous reading for glucose in comparison to what the bedside glucometer, the glucometer that was at the cot side, was showing a low reading. So he's obviously got that from the report or from the notes, although he said he hadn't seen the notes, but he's seen the reports. But I'm assuming he, he made that very definite statement that the glucometer was showing low reading, the cot side glucometer. Uh, but then you've got this, this crazy figure on the immunoassay which leads them to believe they kept on going to this idea of contamination. But what I'm wondering, and why I brought the blood gas machine in is, is it possible that the glucometer was also faulty? And that they, they made these readings, that were, it was giving readings of low uh, blood glucose, but actually they were giving more and more glucose and it just wasn't registering it. I don't know if that's possible. I don't know if, how viable that is. Would they have checked it? What would have happened? talking um, with my friend online about this and and she looked up online about glucometer failure and it says it's one of the most common issues is the de defunct test strips out of date exposure to heat dirt etc this sort of thing i.e that there's a lot of things potentially can go wrong with a glucometer i know there are personal ones you can have uh, but these ones based in the hospital, I don't know the exact nature of those. In what ways can they go wrong? Can they be showing artificially low readings? Um, we've got this situation where the blood gas machine is certainly faulty. And um, it strikes me that you only realise a machine's gone faulty after a certain period of time, don't you, usually? And is, is it possible that this glucometer was faulty and they just didn't, didn't establish it? And uh, maybe it was established later, it was faulty and then replaced. I don't know. I, I, that's a lot of supposition there. The crux of why I'm doing this video is, might it not have been contamination? Might it have been a false reading at, based on the a faulty cot side, bedside glucometer, which was showing an artificially low reading, but then they kept on giving a, an excess of glucose. But I, I would have thought an excess to reach that level would have been noted in the in the notes and the reports themselves. It's a bit tricky this because Dr. Taylor 
acknowledges he hasn't seen the medical notes, I think he says. He's seen the reports, which are, I'm, I'm assuming it's Ev Evans's reports, which obviously, and he, Dr. Taylor in, in the press conference says, the reports make use of all the notes, Evans does. Well, you know, in his way, in his particular style, you know. It's just an idea. I don't know if it's got any, it holds any particular water, but it just, it could, the direction I'm heading towards here, it could be completely wrong, but it's the idea that what's the management of giving glucose wrong, leading to this very high level because of a broken machine and there was something wrong with how they were managing and how much glucose they were giving baby F. And that is that possible that it's that it's not due to some other contamination mechanism. I'm not quite sure uh, what that mechanism is. I'm not saying I should be. I, obviously, I'm not medical. I don't think it was. Obviously, they haven't got time. Probably that fully explained what that mechanism might be at the uh, at the conference today. You know, obviously they they fielded a lot fielded a lot of questions and did brilliantly. So it's just a thought about this glucometer. Might 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 not be might be a dead end, but I'm one, I'm just wondering in the context of having certainly at least one other machine, not in operative order, on that unit, i.e. the blood gas machine. Thanks very much. All the best. Bye bye.